entertainmentbuddha.com Hey now, Star Wars nuts, Matt Haywood here from entertainmentbuddha.com to dive down the good old Star Wars rabbit hole again. This time, I want to discuss some speculations on a few Star Wars The Last Jedi characters who haven't been officially revealed yet. Before I get to the good stuff, I must first give proper credit to the creator of this topic to Darth Hodor, 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 Hodor on Reddit, who is responsible for getting the internet engaged with an idea on who Benicio Del Toro may be playing in Star Wars The Last Jedi. I found his arguments to be mostly sound, so I felt the need to further explore them, hence the reason for this video. I also want to elaborate on it a bit and discuss who I think Laura Dern will be playing in the film too, because her character and Del Toro's may go hand in hand if our theories pan out. Alright, enough with the backstory, let's get to the good stuff. Darth Hodor's main theory is that Benicio Del Toro will be playing an older Ezra Bridger, who is a main character on Disney XD's Star Wars Rebels cartoon. He went on to suggest that Ezra will be Rey's father and that over time the once promising Jedi Padawan eventually turned to the dark side, which is why Luke hid Rey away on Jakku. Soak all that in because it's pretty deep shit, especially if you've been watching Rebels. If you have, then it's not a far stretch to think that Ezra could succumb to the power of the dark side, especially considering his bond to Darth Maul and his time spent with the Sith Holocron. Even at the start of the show's third season, he was seen pulling off Sith-style attacks on the Empire by getting into their heads and making them kill each other, which isn't very Jedi-like, and caught the attention of his squad mates. His actions leave no doubt that this character could be drawn to what the dark side has to offer, so I can get behind Hodor's line of thinking pretty easily. The reason his potential fall is important is because it helps to set up why Luke's Jedi school failed and why Rey was tucked away on Jakku. Hodor theorized that Ezra falls to the dark side, hooks up with Snoke, and then the two of them manipulate Ben Solo into turning on his uncle and wiping out the new batch of Jedi. Foreseeing this, Luke hides Rey away to keep her from the grasp of her now evil father. I mean, this theory isn't that far out if you think about it. Ezra would be about 51 at the time of The Last Jedi, so Del Toro is the right age, and he even has the right look. Ezra being Rey's dad also fits the timeline and isn't as far-fetched as Kenobi being her father thanks to how old he was by the time A New Hope came around. Now there's still plenty of juice behind Luke being her father as the timeline would still work, but I just feel that that would be too obvious of a choice. Holes can be punched in this theory though, with the biggest being would Lucasfilm really take an animated character and cross them over into the Skywalker saga? We've seen them do it successfully in Rogue One, but that is a standalone film and not the meat of the Star Wars saga's main plot threads. For fans of Rebels, it's easier to make this conclusion thanks to our knowledge of the character, but fans who haven't watched the show may be left wondering who is this Ezra character? And why is he in The Last Jedi when you consider his limited live action backstory? Either way, the secrecy behind Del Toro's character in The Last Jedi, who has only been described as someone who dressed in all black and possibly may be villainous, makes one think that he could be playing a major character, which Rey's dad would be, especially if Rey's dad is indeed Ezra Bridger. Sure, Yoda called Luke the last Jedi in Jedi, but if someone has fallen to the dark side, or like Ahsoka, left the Order and no longer considered herself a Jedi, then yes, Luke is the last proper Jedi, so evil Ezra technically wouldn't be a Jedi, and he's still not one in the show, which could change either way by the time the series wraps. Hodor's theory gets a little wonky when he suggests that Rey will ultimately turn to the dark side thanks to her Del Toro daddy, while Kylo will turn to light, but while I don't buy into those theories, I do think he's onto something with the tie-in to Rebels. I'd like to take it one step further and suggest that Laura Dern, who also hasn't had much anything revealed of her for the last Jedi role, could be playing an old Sabine Wren who is also part of the Star Wars Rebels cast. If you watch the show, especially now, I think it's pretty clear that Ezra has a thing for Sabine, and deep down, she shares feelings for him. 
So I wouldn't be surprised at all if the two hooked up and had Baby Ray in their later years after the war with Palpatine's empire ended. Sabine in her own right is a fierce Mandalorian warrior and from a family that essentially equates to royalty on that planet. So it's believable that she could give birth to a powerful girl who also happens to have a strong connection to the Force. She even possesses the fabled Darksaber, which is an ancient relic from the first Mandalorian Jedi and a weapon used to keep the planet's warring factions in order, so she has Jedi-like tendencies if anything else. I just feel that someone with Dern's pedigree isn't going to just play a bit part in The Last Jedi, so it makes sense that she'd be in a role that has some depth and true meaning to the Skywalker saga. Again, timelines would work for her as Sabine, and I know deep down her and Ezra care for each other now, so there's a chance they could hook up one day. Obviously, if Ezra is a bit of a shady dude by the time The Last Jedi comes around, he and Sabine are probably at odds or mortal enemies, so there's potential for some great plot threads here that are rooted in Rebels, but paid off in the live action Star Wars universe. Again, this is all speculation based on another fan's theory, but I don't think it's as far-fetched as it may sound, especially if you're a studious and dedicated Star Wars saga fan. Only time will tell if Ezra and Sabine make the crossover, but if they do, I'm fully supportive of the move and think it could provide a great narrative for The Last Jedi and ultimately Episode 9. Thanks for watching. Make sure to keep those browsers tuned to entertainmentbuddha.com or youtube.com slash entertainmentbuddha because we will make you a better geek one post or one speculation video at a time.